A Memphis father starting trade school to provide for his children is shot and killed, making him one of the more than 600 homicide victims in the last 18 months. Health experts say the time is now to treat gun violence like really any other infectious disease, hospitalizing and killing people. This week, the WRG investigators are digging deeper into the problems harming our community and exploring possible solutions. Tonight, our chief investigator, Jessica Gertler, takes a look at gun violence and why some say a public health response could stop the spread. In place, hundreds pass every day, unaware of the agony. I'm mad, confused. It invokes disappointment for this mother. It was June 6th. And my other son, Marquez, called me and was like, Jalen just called and said I got shot. Ladina Rubin sped back to the gas station on South 3rd. She had just passed on her way home. When I got there, they was just putting the crime scene tape up. Police say her son, Jalen Brooks, and another man who had just got out of prison were walking down the street when someone opened fire. Brooks tried to run away, collapsing in the parking lot. He died before she could get to him. He wasn't the target. That's, that's basically all I know. Brooks was only 21 years old. I'm numb at times, can't sleep can't think, can't eat. She's not alone. Countless families, friends, schools, neighborhoods forever impacted by gun violence. Brooks is one of nearly 200 homicide victims so far this year, a majority killed by gunfire. That's not counting the hundreds of shootings that sent someone to the hospital. It's probably about four a day. Dr. Andy Kerwin is chief of the Regional One Trauma Center. He says the sights and sounds in this operating room are horrific. Our gowns and gloves are covered with blood and it drips down off the table and it gets on our shoes and there's puddles of blood on the floor and you're, you're standing in them. One person's here talking to the first patient, they're talking to the second patient. They're in pain, maybe sometimes they're yelling. The next part, even worse. You tell family members when they're loved one died and sometimes we cry with them, sometimes they hug us, sometimes they're really angry. Kerwin says it's physically and emotionally draining. Burnout's a real thing for the physicians, the nurses, the respiratory therapists. Would you say that gun violence is a public health crisis? I do, I, th I think it is and, and I think that's how we should approach it. Meaning treating gun violence like an infectious disease, researching and determining root causes, testing prevention strategies and prescribing the policies and programs proven to stop the spread. Take COVID for an example. As the community gave support and prayers to health care workers and first responders, money and resources poured in. Medical experts, political leaders and more coordinated an approach, including lockdowns, mandates and daily briefings. Imagine if we put those types of resources and that kind of information in front of our community. Shelby County Health Director Dr. Michelle Taylor says combating gun violence will take more than police. She applauds city, county and nonprofits funding intervention and prevention work. But we still have a lot more work to do. Work, she believes, is overdue. That even if we started now, it would take years to see significant change. Gun deaths have increased at an alarming rate across the country. Since 2006, it's been the leading cause of death for black youth. These are some of their faces. Recently, it became the number one killer among all children and teens. Now it's an issue because it's spilled over into other places. So we also have to do some self-reflection work as a community and ask why that is. Taylor says more research will help the community figure out how we got to this point, whether that's poverty, education, lack of mental health care, research that's really been lacking. See, guns are a political football. It took nearly two decades for Congress to lift a ban against any funding earmarked for gun safety. How do you expect us to make significant strides to start to solve this issue when you've got policies in place that work, that are diametrically op opposed to solving these issues. Last month, the U.S. Surgeon General officially declared gun violence a public health crisis, calling for more funding for research and more gun laws. But unless there's federal action, it won't likely ignite change in Tennessee, where laws steer away from most firearm restrictions. 
but certain. We're seeing an alarming rate of guns. Shelby County deputies say more than they've ever seen. Many stolen from cars. They're also encountering more high powered firearms and switches, which are tiny devices that turn a Glock into a machine gun. Spinning rapid fire that's hard to control, maximizing destruction. It's almost like we're in a position where we're outgunned from the beginning of the encounter. You know, so it's a dangerous situation, and every year we're focusing our attention on just making sure our deputies have the right equipment, make sure they have the right protective gear. Especially because the injuries from these guns are more lethal. They don't come with one bullet hole in them now, they, they come with 10. Some, you know, one time I think at 19, we counted on somebody. Kerwin says this shouldn't be routine. Ruben agrees. That's the hardest part, the going to bed at nighttime. She says she's never lost someone so close to violence before. It's crippling. She misses her son's smile. He was great. He got baptized at four. He used to preach. <laughs> her baby boy, who became a devoted father, family came first. Brooks was a high school track star, an aspiring rap artist, set to start auto mechanic trade school that Monday. I have good memories of him, so. I'm gonna be okay. On June 21st, Brooks' casket was carried by his brothers and loved ones. Lives forever changed by gun violence. Investigating for your news leader, Jessica Gertler, WREG News Channel 3. Too many laws, lives lost to gun violence, and police are still looking for the person who shot her son. A gun GoFundMe has been set up to raise money for Brooks' children and family. For more information, head over to our website and click on this story. Tomorrow on News Channel 3 at 10, another problem destroying families, a deadly drug the size of a grain of salt, killing hundreds and hospitalizing even more. Hear from one judge trying to help.